Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.9, Multiplication and Division. Our essential question for this lesson is, how can you use the strategy Solve a Simpler Problem to help you solve a division problem? Now, go ahead and open your GoMath workbook to page 19, and let's get started. Now, let's review some good problem-solving strategies. I know that I always need to, first of all, read the problem. Once I read the problem, I need to ask myself, what do I need to find? Also, what information do I need to use? And then, how will I use the information to help me solve the problem? Okay, let's take a look at question number one. Now, as you can see, question number one has already been worked out for us, but it's a good example of how to use the strategy, solve a simpler problem, in order to solve a division problem. So I'm going to start out first of all by reading question number one. It says, Danny is making punch for a family picnic. She adds 16 fluid ounces of orange juice, 16 fluid ounces of lemon juice, and 8 fluid ounces of lime juice to 64 fluid ounces of water. How many 8 ounce glasses of punch can she fill? Now, there's a few things that I noticed. First of all, I noticed that she adds 16 fluid ounces of orange juice, 16 fluid ounces of lemon juice, and 8 fluid ounces of lime juice to 64 fluid ounces of water. So what I know that I need to do first is this. I'm going to use that word that's given, which is add, and I'm going to add those numbers together. So I'm going to add the 16 fluid ounces of orange juice, the 16 fluid ounces of lemon juice, the 8 fluid ounces of lime juice, and the 64 fluid ounces of water. When I add those numbers together, it takes me to 104 fluid ounces. Now I also see that it says how many 8 ounce glasses of punch can she fill. So I now have to take my 104 fluid ounces and I'm going to divide it by the 8 ounces that can fit in each glass. So my problem becomes 104 divided by 8. Now the problem is I cannot very easily divide 104 by 8. But what I can do is this. I can take that 104 and I can make simpler numbers from that 104. I can break it apart into numbers that are easier to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 104 and I'm going to break it apart into 40 plus 64. Because if I add 40 plus 64, that gives me 104. Now what I also know is this. Both 40 and 64 are multiples of 8. So these are good numbers to choose in this problem. Now, what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to focus on that 40 and I'm now going to say 40 divided by 8. Then I'm going to focus on the 64 and I'm now going to say 64 divided by 8. Well, I know that 40 divided by 8 is going to give me 5 and I know that 64 divided by 8 is going to give me 8. And when I add those two numbers together, 5 plus 8 takes me to 13. So what I know is we're going to have 13 8 ounce glasses of punch that can be filled and I've been able to solve that problem using the strategy solve a simpler problem. Now let's take a look at question number two. Once again we have a word problem so my first step is going to be to read problem number two. Problem two says Ryan has nine 14 ounce bags of popcorn to repackage and sell at the school fair. A small bag holds three ounces. How many small bags can he make? Well, as I read through this problem, there's some information that I know that I'm going to need to use. First of all, I know that Ryan has nine 14 ounce bags of popcorn. So what I need to do first is this. To find out how much popcorn I have, how many ounces, I need to take my 14, and my first step is going to be to multiply that by nine. So I'm going to go ahead and work that multiplication. First of all, I'm going to multiply the 9 times the 4. And I know that 9 times 4 is going to give me 36. So I'm going to put the 6 down and I'm going to regroup the 3. Now I need to multiply the 9 times the 1. Well, I know that 9 times 1 is 9, but I have to also add the regroup 3. So 9 times 1 is 9, and 9 plus 3 is going to give me 12. So I'm going to write down the 12. And so what I know is, I have 126 ounces of popcorn that need to be repackaged. 
Now, there's some more information that I need to be aware of in this problem. It also says that a small bag holds three ounces. How many small bags can we make? Well, if I know that I have a total of 126 ounces of popcorn, and a small bag can hold three ounces, I'm going to take my 126 ounces and divide that by three. Now, 126 divided by three is not a very easy division problem to work, but what I know is this. I can take that 126 and I can now solve a simpler problem. I can break that 126 apart into two numbers that would be much easier to work with. So when I look at 126, I think about breaking it apart into 120 plus 6. Because if I add 120 plus 6, it's going to take me back to my 126. Now I'm going to go ahead and write down the divided by 3. Now I also notice something else. When I look at my 120 and my 6, I know that they are both multiples of 3, so these are good numbers to choose in this problem. Now my next step is going to be this. I'm going to now break this apart. I'm going to take my 120 and I'm going to divide it by 3. And then to that, I'm going to take my 6 and also divide it by 3. So I now am solving a simpler division problem to help me find my answer. Now I'm going to look at the problem. I have 120 divided by 3. Well, here's what I know. I know that 12 divided by 3 is 4, so I can write a 4 down. But I know that there's that 0 hanging out behind the 12, so I'm going to add a 0 to that. So I know that 120 divided by 3 is going to give me 40. Now I'm going to look at the next part of the problem. I also have 6 divided by 3. Well, I know that 6 divided by 3 is going to give me 2. Now, when I add my 40 and my 2 together, that's going to take me to 42. So what I know is he can make 42 3-ounce bags of popcorn, and I've used the strategy solve a simpler problem to answer that question. Now, let's take a look at question number 3. Once again, I have a word problem, so my first step is going to be to read question number 3. Question 3 says, Bianca is making scarves to sell. She has 33 pieces of blue fabric, 37 pieces of green fabric, and 41 pieces of red fabric. Suppose Bianca uses 3 pieces of fabric to make one scarf. How many scarves can she make? Now, as I'm reading through that problem, there's some information that I know that I'm going to need to use. I know that she has 33 pieces of blue fabric, 37 pieces of green fabric, and 41 pieces of red fabric. So my first step is going to be to add those numbers together. So I'm going to take my 33, and that represents 33 pieces of blue fabric. To that I'm going to add my 37, because it's 37 pieces of green fabri fabric. And then I'm also going to add my 41, because that represents 41 pieces of red fabric. Now, when I add those numbers together, that's going to take me to a total of 111. So I have 111 pieces of fabric. Now, I also have some other information in this problem that I need to be aware of. I know that Bianca uses three pieces of fabric to make one scarf. So if I have 111 pieces of fabric, and it takes three pieces of that fabric to make one scarf, I'm going to divide my 111 by 3. Now what I know is 111 divided by 3 is not a very easy division problem to solve. So I'm going to think about how could I use the strategy solve a simpler problem. How could I break apart that 111 into two numbers that would be much easier to work with? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to break apart that 111 into 90 plus 21. Because if I add 90 plus 21, that's going to take me back to my 111. Also important with these numbers is the fact that both 90 and 21 are multiples of 3. Now, once I've divided that 111 into 90 and 21, I'm also going to write down that I'm dividing that by 3. 
Now I'm going to create my two simpler division problems. I'm going to now rewrite this as 90 divided by 3 plus my 21 divided by 3. Now I have two very simple division problems that are going to help me get to the answer of this problem. Well, first of all, I'm going to look at my 90 divided by 3. And I know that when I divide 9 by 3, it's going to give me 3, but I also have that 0 hanging out behind the 9. So I'm going to add a 0 to my 3. So 90 divided by 3 is going to give me 30. Now I also have to divide my 21 by 3. And when I divide 21 by 3, that's going to give me 7. Now, when I add my 30 and my 7 together, it's going to take me to an answer of 37. So what I know is, is that Bianca can make 37 scarves, and I've used a strategy to solve a simpler problem to help me find that answer. Now, let's take a look at question number four. Once again, I have a word problem, so my first step is going to be to read that problem. Number four says, Jasmine has eight packs of candle wax to make scented candles. Each pack contains 14 ounces of wax. Jasmine uses seven ounces of wax to make one candle. How many candles can she make? Now, once again, there's some information that I need to be aware of. I know that Jasmine has eight packs of candle wax. And I know that each pack contains 14 ounces of wax. So in order to determine how many ounces of wax I have, I'm first of all going to take my 14 and I'm going to multiply it by my 8. So let's go ahead and work through that multiplication. My first step is going to be to multiply the 8 by the 4. Now when I multiply 8 times 4, that's going to give me 32. So I'm going to write my 2 down and I'm going to regroup my 3. Now I'm going to focus on multiplying the 8 by the 1. Well, when I multiply 8 times 1, I know that's going to give me 8, but I also have to add that regrouped 3. So 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 plus 3 is going to give me 11. So I know that I have a total of 112 ounces of candle wax. Now, in the problem, it also says that Jasmine uses 7 ounces of wax to make one candle. So I'm going to take my 112 ounces of wax and I'm going to divide that by 7, which is what it takes to make just one candle. Now the problem is 112 divided by 7 is not a very easy division problem to work. So I'm going to use my strategy solve a simpler problem to help me solve this. Now I think, how could I break apart my 112? And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to break that 112 apart into 70, and let's write down 70, so it's going to become 70 plus 42. Because if I add 70 plus 42, I know that it takes me back to my 112, and also 70 and 42 are both multiples of 7. Now. I have 70 plus 42, and then behind that I'm just going to go ahead and write down that I'm going to be dividing that by 7. Now let's break it down even further. I'm now going to take my 70 and I'm going to divide it by 7, and then I'm going to add to that my 42 also divided by my 7. So I now have two simpler division problems that are easier for me to solve and what I'm going to look at first is 70 divided by 7. Well, I know that if I divide 70 by 7, that's going to give me 10. Now I'm going to look at the 42 divided by 7. And I know that if I divide 42 by 7, that's going to take me to 6. My last step is to add my 10 and my 6 together. And when I add 10 plus 6, that's going to take me to 16. So what I know is, Jasmine can make 16 candles, and I've used a strategy to solve a simpler problem to help me find that answer. Now, let's take a look at question number five. Once again, I have a word problem, so my first step needs to be to read the question. For number five, it says, Maurice puts 130 trading cards in protector sheets. He fills seven sheets and puts the remaining four cards in an eighth sheet. Each of the filled sheets has the same number of cards. How many cards are in each filled sheet? 
Now, there's some information that I need to know as I'm working to solve this problem. I know that Maurice has 130 trading cards. I know that he fills seven sheets and he puts the remaining four cards in an eighth sheet. Now, what I need to do first is this. I'm going to take the 130 cards that Maurice has and what I know is he put the remaining four cards in an eighth sheet. So what that means is I have to take the four extra cards away from the 130. Now, when I take four away from the 130, that's going to take me to 126. Now, it says once again that he fills seven sheets. And each of the filled sheets has the same number of cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 126 and I'm now going to divide it by the seven sheets. Now, when I look at that division problem, what I know is 126 divided by 7 is not a very easy division problem to work. So I'm going to ask myself, how could I break apart that 126, the dividend, into two smaller numbers that would be easier to work with? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that apart into 70 plus 56. Because if I were to add 70 and 56 together, it's going to take me back to my 126. Now, what I also know is this. I know that both 70 and 56 are also multiples of 7. So I know these are two good numbers to choose. Now, behind that set of parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and write down once again divided by 7. Now I'm going to break this apart into two smaller division problems. So I'm first of all going to take my 70 and I'm going to divide it by the 7 and then I'm going to add to that my 56 also divided by my 7. So I now have two division problems that are easier for me to solve. I'm going to start out first looking at 70 divided by 7. I know that if I divide 70 by 7 that's going to take me to 10. Then I'm going to look at 56 divided by 7 and I know that if I divide 56 by 7 that's going to give me 8. Now my last step is to add the 10 and the 8 together. And when I add 10 plus 8, that's going to take me to 18. So what I know is Maurice can put 18 cards in each of his sheets. And I've used a strategy solve a simpler problem to help me get to that answer. Now here are your homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one, as well as question number two, and then also numbers three through six. These homework questions can be found on page 20 in your GoMath workbook. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page I want you to let me know, do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete number one and number two, as well as numbers three through six, found on page 20 in your GoMath workbook. I hope you have a great evening and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.